Today I'm going to show you how I use uh, Apple Compressor and how I compress a file. So if you look right here in my uh, export folders, I'm working on a wedding here and it's a 54 gigabyte file. And of course, as you know, I, I, a DVD only holds 4.7 gigabytes and there would be no way for me to put that on uh, the DVD. So what I'm going to do is like I, what I've done with the other uh, DVD files is compress this 54 gigabyte file. So first thing we open up Apple Compressor and when we open it up um, we're faced with about uh, a couple of menus. So I am just under the uh, standard 1440 by 900 that is my screen just the standard and um, I like that window layout so a couple of things you can do you can drag the footage um, if I have this right here I can drag it right to uh, the file or I can add the file that way I'm just gonna drag it I just like dragging it there alright and when you look at compressor you can see thumbnails right here or if you want to look um, right here you can actually see the footage as well so this is all DSLR footage, uh, 7D, 5D Mark uh, 3 footage that we shot. And uh, basically I wanted to do a couple of things. Compressor can do many things. And uh, I'm not going to go into all the details of what Compressor can do with droplets and with, with, with encoding and presets and all of that. But I'm going to tell you how I get this 54 gigabyte file to about a 1.3 gig file. So the first thing I'm going to do is I created a preset based off of once I go under uh, DVD settings and I can go into disk burning and Apple has a Blu-ray preset and then a DVD preset so all I did was take the DVD preset and let's go <clears throat> through the DVD preset very quickly uh, it is M2V and then its estimated size is 1.26 gigabyte per hour of source. So it's going to be about, you know, a gig and a half if I have an hour source. And uh, this file, as you know, is um, about an hour long, about 58 minutes, almost, almost an hour, an hour long. Okay, so what I'm going to do, um, I'm going to go here and look at my settings, a standard DVD and the quality and this is where it all happens, at least for the quality of what you want with megabits per second and the maximum bit rate. You can, I can move that down a little bit, uh, but I have it going to one pass variable bit rate just because the reception has a lot of movement and I wanted to, to actually do a pass through it, a one pass instead of going two pass because it would take twice as long. Um, but since it has a lot of movement and things like that, I want to make sure that I get a good bit rate. I'm not going to go into GOP right now or extras. We won't do extras. But I do want to make sure that this is checked. Another box we have, we can have if we have frame controls and all of that stuff. I leave that um, just on on the default. And then here's where you can add different filters and letterbox and watermarks, a time code if I'm uh, putting it out to a client. And then um, you can crop it. But I'm going to leave it. Um, I'm going to leave it as is because you'll see when it comes out, it's going to be in DVD Studio Pro. I'm going to make it 16 by 9 and it's automatically 16 by 9. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to drag this up, this preset, and then I'm going to right click here, destination, other, and I want it to go to, um, that says, do I want to save my changes? And I said, no, I'm just going to revert to the last one. I have a fo folder that says DVD files. All right. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to change the name and keep the extension. And I'm going to say reception and then hit enter for that. And then also the wedding Dolby Digital. And I'm just going to do the same thing for that. Just right click on that and hit other. And then it goes to my DVD files. And that is an AC3 uh, file that I'm going to use. Reception and hit enter. And then I'm going to hit the submit button. And then I'm going to just call it reception on this computer high. I'll leave that high. And uh, we don't have, uh, I don't have any other clusters, so it's going to be fine. And then I'm going to go on the share monitor to see how long it's going to take um, with that. So when I come back, we should have about a file that's going to be estimated about a gig and a half. Um, it says it's going to take longer than what it really is, but uh, we'll be back. It'll keep on counting down, and I'll be back to see uh, the final. Uh, bit rate and a final uh, size. All right.
All right, so it has finished, and let's see uh, information about the uh, the job. It has finished, and um, once we see, and um, it, it has 48 minutes has elapsed, and uh, that's about all. Let's see now once we close out, and we close out, or we minimize compressor. Let's see what we can see about uh, the files that we have. So we're going to go under our finder. And once I go into my finder, I'm going to go under. And then I'm going to go under my exports, my DVD files. Now remember, my original file is 54 gigabytes. And now my file is 1.7 gigabytes. And it is in all its glory and all of its... Uh, let's just see how it looks. Okay. For now, it doesn't look bad at all. So... Uh, that is a quick tutorial on how you compress uh, footage with compressor. And uh, you should use this at any time that you want to compress footage and that you want to bring things on to a DVD. I use it especially for DSLR footage or XD cam, HD. Um, I use Adobe Media Encoder mainly for web. And then uh, I use Sorrenton Squeeze as well, a third program. But I think compressor is really good if you're just trying to make DVDs and then I bring them into Toast or to DVD Studio Pro or Adobe Encore to actually make the menus and everything like that. So this is Chip Desard with webvideochefs.com. Thanks for watching and we will see you soon.